Hello, everybody. Happy Friday to everybody out there, and welcome to Cub Chat Live. We always say it, Michael. It's the best time of the week, 2 p.m. Central Time, Friday afternoon. It's our favorite time of the week. I'm Joe. My name's Aaron. I'll be the host today. But as always, our special guests are really the star of the show. And we're joined today by our good friend and coworker, Michael Ramsey. Michael, how are you, sir? I'm fantastic. Happy Friday. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. Happy Friday to you as well. To all of you watching, of course, at home. Today's discussion, um, kind of a continuation of what we talked about last week. In case you guys uh, missed that, you could always go back and watch those shows. Kind of along the same lines of summer's almost over. I can't believe it. Um, I, recruiting season is kind of year round, but uh, the real, you know, real heavy duty recruiting season is basically upon us. And we're here to talk about with Michael about some of the resources that we have available for, for you in specific, this thing called the BSA Brand Center, which uh, some of you might already be using. Some of you might not have heard of it. Uh, some of you might have given it a shot at some point and said, ah, that's not for me. Well, we're here to talk about it. Maybe we can change your mind a little bit. Um, Michael, maybe to get us started, uh, kind of just, and by the way, as we do our discussion today, feel free to uh, ask questions, put your questions in the, in the comment section, and we will uh, try to get to all of those. But Michael, to get us started, just kind of give us an idea, what is the BSA Brand Center? The BSA Brand Center, first of all, thanks for having me this afternoon. It is Friday. I appreciate everybody taking a few minutes out on a, on a hot Friday afternoon to be part of Cub Chat, this is great, especially to talk about recruitment, which is my favorite topic. So thanks, Aaron. It's fun to hear to be here behind the scenes at Cub Chat, too. It's like being behind the scenes of your favorite shows. Kind of cool. <laughs> hey, so yeah, so the BSA Brand Center, years and years ago, we said we need a place where people can find copies of logos, recruitment flyers, all that marketing and promotional stuff that we need to, to spread the word about scouting. So we created the BSA Brand Center. And we'll, maybe we'll get to this in a second, but I'll go ahead and kind of skip to the to the very, very end. But if you go to scouting.org forward slash recruitment, and I think we've got a slide later on, you can find links to this and all the other cool stuff that we'll talk about. But scouting.org forward slash recruitment, there's a link on there for the BSA Brand Center, and it's super cool. So can't wait to give you a little tour behind the scenes. Yeah, yeah, it's awesome. And uh, I also should qualify to everyone that our behind the scenes Brian, our regular producer, is taking a much deserved vacation today. Uh, it's, a, it's 99 degrees here in North Texas, Michael. And he, Brian, has gone up to Wyoming on vacation. So he is probably a lot more comfortable right now than we are, but we wish him well. All that to say that URL was a little bit targeted today because I'm the one putting these things up. Bear with <laughs> us, folks. We appreciate that. But I think scouting.org recruitment slash recruitment is, is a good place for folks to start, Mike, right, Michael? Absolutely. Anything that you're looking for recruitment related, flyers, videos, and we'll take a look at all this in a few minutes. That's your one-stop shop for all the, all the stuff that we've got up there. And by the way, it was all created typically because somebody from a council, maybe one of you had called us and said, hey, I need a door hanger or I need a seven second mm -hmm. video. We respond to that, we create that material, and then we say, hmm, well, if you need it, then probably somebody else does too. We put it on the brand center and it's all there. And by the way, we all do it based on a lot of research that we do across the country. Awesome, awesome. Uh, again, reminder to folks watching, if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments. We've got a hello from uh, Buckeye, Arizona, PAC 263. Thank you guys for watching. PAC 2540 from Colleen, Texas. Longhorn Council is watching. Thank you guys time for watching. We've got a commenter who says recruiting season is their big, busiest time of the year as a scouter. Thank you. We appreciate that. Uh, recruiting is, yeah. is, is, is boy, vital and important. And we definitely appreciate the service and the time that you put the efforts that you put towards that. Hello to PAC 84 from New Philadelphia, Ohio, Buckeye Council. Thank you guys for watching. Uh, and also got some folks checking in from the Greater Niagara Frontier Council. They're actually at day camp, I think. Day camp maybe right now. That's awesome. Okay, I bet the weather yeah. there is nice and cool. Um, so as we get into um, recruiting and what the BSA Brand Center has to offer. Uh, before we kind of get into that nitty gritty details, Michael, I want to back up a little bit. And, and you've got some interesting studies, some facts, some numbers, some things that you guys have found about what parents are looking for, right? So if you're trying to market your pack or sell your pack to a family, it's good to know what they're looking for, right? Like we need to know what are people Absolutely. interested in buying? What do we know about parents you know, we're talking about non-scouting families for the most part, I think, right? What are they Absolutely. Looking, yeah, what are they looking for? 
You know, so we we have a research department at the National Service Center, a great resource named Pat Wellen, who's always out in the field talking to parents, particularly potential scouting parents, about what their impressions of scouting are, what do they want when they get their kiddos signed up. And it's really interesting. In fact, we did some, uh, in the heart of COVID last summer, we did some focus groups with parents in 24 different markets and really talk to them about their their impressions of Cub Scouting. What do they think? Um, and it's pretty interesting stuff. One of the things we found was that overwhelmingly, parents have a very, very positive impression of Cub Scouting. They, when they hear Cub Scouting, they think good things about it, which is great because Cub Scouting is awesome, right? And, uh, and the word is out amongst parents, even if they don't know a whole lot about what goes on in the program, um, they feel good about the program. So that's, that's really it. cool. Yeah, that's interesting to know. And, and also, I think one of the other things, the downside, maybe if, if the bad news is that parents generally, we find, are unaware of scouts that are, are packs that are, are near them. Is that right? That's absolutely right. Right. And it's it's like a lot of things, right? If you don't see it in your neighborhood, if you don't see posters or flyers, if you don't see a sticker come home, you're just generally not aware of it because scouting is really not a bricks and mortar type of our or you know, operation. We, we may have meetings at a local community center or a church, but, you know, there's typically not a big sign on the side of the road that says Cub Scouts meet here. So maybe a little bit out of sight, out of mind. So they love us, but they're generally not aware of Cub Scouting in the community unless they see a yard sign or get a flyer mm -hmm. home about uh, recruiting night. That's absolutely that's a, right. That's an interesting uh, kind of dynamic there. The positive impression they have of us is a good thing. Now we just need to make sure they know where right. we are, that we very are likely right there at that school or church or whatever chartering organization right around the corner from where uh, where they live. So that's that's kind of what we're going to talk about today, guys, is how the, the Brand Center can help spread that awareness. Um, another thing that you said, Michael, that I was kind of surprised about, but, you know, it's one of those things you and I have talked about this before, about people like you and me who, who live scouting, who know everything. We know things. Maybe we take for granted that some folks out there don't know things. For example... What did you guys find out about parents and, and girls in Cub Scouts? I mean, you and I know we've been excited about girls being in Cub Scouts for years, but what do other parents think? Oh, absolutely. And, and I'll just kind of set this up and say that, and this is how important communications is and marketing for, for our units and for our districts and for our councils. You're right. We've been talking about girls in Cub Scouts and Scouts BSA now for years. You know, we've had inaugural classes full of female Eagle Scouts, just amazing accomplishments that these young women have performed. Um, literally billions with a B of media impressions around those first female Eagle Scout in whatever council it is. But here's what we found out from talking to parents in literally 24 different markets across the country, across um, racial and demographic uh, profiles. None of them knew that girls could join Cub Scouts. That's Even after billions of media impressions. Right. <laughs> but you know, here's how we can we talk about it, Aaron. We talk about scouting being it's like educating a parade going by. We talk to we're blue in the face and we think everybody's heard about it, but that group of parents has moved on. And guess what? There's a new group there that hasn't heard uh, about that it's time to join or about that girls can be involved in Cub Scouts. So uh, anyway, I think it's really important. There, there's probably a barrier too, and this kind of gets back to recruitment that what we've heard from some councils and some schools is that those schools may have been getting recruitment flyers from the Boy Scouts of America for years. Mm -hmm. And it probably went like this. Hey, I'm from the Boy Scouts. Would you pass these flyers out to all of the boys in grades X through whatever it happened to be? And so that's kind of part of their system software. Mm -hmm. Oh, these flyers, they go to the boys. Mm -hmm. When the reality is we probably changed our message and said, hey, would you pass these out to the boys and girls mm -hmm. to recruit for Cub Scouts? Right. But they still just pass them out to the boys because that's what we've always done, right? Sure, so, right, yeah. yeah. The, the, par the parade analogy uh, is very appropriate. And I'm thinking in this case, it's it's a long parade and it's good to keep reminding every new car that goes by kind of what's <laughs> going on. Uh, that's right. Uh, quick, a few more shout outs here. Uh, hello from Scouts in Denmark who are watching. Thank you guys for watching. Awesome. Uh, pack 354 from Dundalk, Dundalk Maryland in the Baltimore area councils watching. Thank you. Uh, looks like Callie, she's the membership chair uh, in their pack. Thank you. Um, Great. Jeremy says that uh, in his his opinion, pack uh, Cub Scouts have, have undergone some negative media coverage. And uh, in, in his opinion, some parents do not have a good expectation of scouting anymore. Michael, our research shows, though, that overall, 
parents do still have a positive impression of us. I, I just want to make sure. Do I understand that right? That's what the research says. When we talk to parents, and, and again, these are parents that don't know anything about us, right? right. But they've heard about Cub Scouting. Um, and there's some other dynamics at work there too, but but overwhelmingly, it's a very positive impression of scouting and, and Cub Scouting in particular, right? Yeah. Uh, probably that's the, the family nature of the program and and a much more community-based thing that we might we might think about. Right. Yeah. Jeremy is, is is talking in the chat about the effort that they put into recruiting. Jeremy, we appreciate your efforts. Uh, mm -hmm. I know. Yeah. There has been some negative media. Certainly. Obviously, we've all seen that over the last year or so. We appreciate your efforts. Uh, keep at it. And maybe today, watching today's show, you'll you'll learn something new. Um, Hello to Troop, Troop 49 in Boise, Idaho. We, we like Scouts BSA troops to watch Cub Chat Live. There's nothing wrong with that. We love that. Right. Thank you guys, Troop 49, for watching. Appreciate it. And, and uh, Austin, Texas is chiming in with their uh, seven-year-old wolf girls. All right. There Man. you go. Girls and Cub Scouts right there down in Austin. Thank you for watching. Keep those comments coming, guys. Keep those questions coming. Um, again, we're just about to get to more specifics of Brand Center, but there's one more thing, Michael, that our research showed that it, I think is probably just a good thing to know. Hmm. To recap real quick, most parents have a positive impression of Cub Scouting. Jeremy, I know you've maybe found some that didn't, but in general, most have positive impressions. They're also unaware that scouts are uh, based locally where they are. They don't know that girls can join. The fourth one is interesting, uh, and it has to do with fundraising. What, what, uh, fundraising, you know, it's a part of all nonprofits, but Michael, what do people think about fundraising? It's kind of this was really interesting because we're working with this researcher and working with these uh, moms in 24 different markets. And the researcher calls me and she says, hey, can I talk to you for a second? Well, of course you can. And she says, tell me about fundraising at the unit level. And I said, why are you asking? And she said, we've gotten a lot, some negative feedback. And, and so what basically she was saying was this, that um, obviously we're not going to change. We, we're always innovating the way we raise money uh, to support our units and our councils and our districts and all those things. But, but that's not a message mom wants to hear locally because listen, we could, we could have a whole cup chat just talking about the research around parents today because I think we all know parents are busier than ever. So, hey, we've got this great program. Oh, and then we're going to do some some fundraising. Um, we know that's part of our program. We know it's critical to help fund the campouts and all the things that we do. But uh, our, our advice is maybe don't leave with that message. Um, <laughs> certainly make sure they understand the value of the program. Um, and then say, oh, by the way, we sell popcorn and, you know, whatever it is you have to do to raise funds. But uh, it was it was an interesting insight. Um, we don't think it's a negative, but we think in that initial conversation, you just don't start with the popcorn conversation. Yes. Let's, let's, let's let them understand right. the value of the program first. And then we can talk about how right. we actually deliver the program and with our support of our families. And I, I would think that that very, very few families join any organization, you know, sports, whatever it is, wanting to go do fundraising, right? So yeah, good idea not to lead with the uh, <laughs> fundraising uh, point. Um, one more bit of data that I want to share with our viewers, Michael. Um, I thought this was kind of interesting. Oh, yeah. How do people hear about scouting? Can you can you go through our list here? And, and what are we Absolutely. looking at here? So we talked about the research earlier, and we do a, something called the joining study that happens every year. And so we follow up with people that join, parents you typically, and we say, hey, how did you hear about us? Those kinds of things. And so this is this is actually fairly consistent from year to year. Uh, Ten percent of people saw Cub Scouts around town. But honestly, I think probably a lot of that's popcorn sales. Maybe they're raising flags in front of the school. Those kinds of things. Yeah. Um, maybe you're putting flags out at the local cemetery or part of a parade. That visibility is really important. Yeah. Um, flyer at school. Honestly, as much as we use flyers, I expected this to be higher, but it's an important piece. Almost 25% of people got a flyer at school, which is great. The next two are also super interesting, right? Because I think it taught, it kind of goes to uh, the generational nature of scouting. You know, I was a Cub Scout. My dad was a Cub Scout. Mm -hmm. There's this whole thing. So uh, they heard about Cub Scouting because they have a family member or a friend who is in Cub Scouting or scouting us somewhere along the way. Right? We've all had that experience, right? My yep. uncle was an Eagle Scout. I'm going to be mm -hmm. an Eagle Scout too, those kinds mm -hmm. of things. Um, and last one, 35% family member was or, or is a scout. Again, there's a generational component to our movement, which is great, but I think it's also really important. This is, There's a lesson here that we've got to make sure we're not just talking to ourselves, but we're using things like the assets that are on the brand center to spread the word out to the broader community. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, excellent, excellent information. We've got quite a few folks watching here. 
Um, again, I'm sorry. Give me a second, guys. Uh, behind the scenes, Brian, not here right now, which leaves me pushing a bunch of buttons behind the scenes. I uh, want to go through a quick more shout outs. Lawrence says, uh, using an integrated communications approach to generating top of mind awareness of Cub Scouts is critical for recruiting, especially on a year round basis. Lawrence sounds like a pro. He can Listen, Lawrence, you. Should, Lawrence nailed it. We should get should. a new Lawrence. That's, <laughs> yeah, he's healing my mind. That's exactly. Right. Yes. Thank you, Lawrence. Uh, Jens, Jens, as uh, you may get, you guys may get to this later, but I have heard multiple times that people don't, don't join because it's too much. And I think she means by too much. Uh, there's too many activities. They can't fit into their schedule. They're too busy. How do you suggest we advertise that not every activity is mandatory? It's what you make of it. We're not asking you to quit other activities. That's a good question, Michael. Can you answer maybe? Give Jen some advice. How do we respond when someone says, ah, I don't have time for scouts? It's a really great question. And we've one of the things that we found through the research, and I wish I had a slide on it, known this was coming up, that typically we wouldn't found, be able to put it on the screen anyway, Michael. So it's fine. No, right? But you know what we've seen from our research is that typically Cub Scouts and Scouts in the program broader are not just involved in one thing. Typically, they're involved in a lot of different things. As as my kids were, probably yours are as well. You know, we're, certainly you've got school activities, but maybe it's soccer, maybe it's baseball. Uh, so I think kids that are that gravitate towards scouting probably do a lot of different things. I think one of our key messages. I know when I did recruiting, I joke that I'm a recovering Cub Master and Scout Master. It's it's true. When people yeah. would come and say, man, we're so busy. You know what? That's fine. One night a week, we're here. Look, and if you've got band practice next week or whatever it is, we totally understand, right? right. We understand that there's, you've got a lot of things going on in your lives. Um, be here. Here's what we're going to do. And we'll do our best to make sure that you're caught up with the, all the activities. Um, right. You know what? I think the, one of the important conversations um, as part of our joining scouting, join scouting nights is what is the value of the program, right? It's about character. It's about leadership. And I think we have a slide that talks about why people sign up. I do have I do have that ready. And so unfortunately, Look Michael and I are blocking the top line. I apologize for that. <laughs> <laughs> what it says is, though, the top reasons parents say they decided to join Cub Scouting. And here are those here are those reasons right here, Michael. Yeah, no, this is this is I'm really glad they asked this question, because if you had asked me several years ago before I saw this research for Cub Scouts, I would have assumed probably that why did you sign your daughter up for Cub Scouting? So they'll have a good time. Want them to have fun, be entertained. And then the other things are important, but probably would come later. But these are actually in a rank priority from parents. Parents said, we want to develop character in our young people. We want them to learn about nature and outdoor skills, which I was surprised was kind of number two, but it's interesting. We can talk about that, but to build confidence and self-esteem. Um, they want to be part of a values-based organization, an organization that, that's making a difference in their community. And of that top five or six, fun is fun is last. Now, there's a lot more reasons they said they would sign up for, but mm -hmm. it's not number one. I think that's an important conversation to have with parents that, hey, definitely, we're going to have a great time. Your son or daughter is going to love this. And along the way, they're going to develop character. They're going to learn how to be better people. We're going to learn some outdoor skills and have some fun along the way. So, right, uh, right. Yeah, good conversation. Good. Good conversation to have, good information. Uh, got quite a few comments. I'm going to try to get to everyone's comments and questions, guys. Uh, Michael, we might go a little bit long today. I hope you're available. We are going to try to get, we want to make sure everybody has a chance to comment. I have comment. entire afternoon for this, Aaron, so what bring it on. What else are we going to do? It's Friday afternoon. It's Cub Chat Live time. Um, Arnold says hello. This is an easy one. Arnold says hi from the East Trinity Trails District and the Circle 10 Council. Arnold, thank you for watching. Fiona oh. says, um, and this is, I think, interesting. It's 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 more than just about recruiting. It's about the language that you use at Cub Scout meetings and events, uh, even in packs that have had girls in the packs as the pilot. I think Fiona is talking about again, like you say, a lot of folks not knowing that girls uh, can join. A lot of people still call it uh, the organization is still called Boy Scouts of America, right? The program is now called Scouts BSA. Understandably, you hear to it referred uh, hear it referred to as Boy Scouts all the time which makes right. sense. But again, it's that whole parade thing going by. Fiona, I, I agree with you. Um, it's important that we use the right language, especially volunteers. It's important that we be conscious uh, while you're recruiting and then just in your regular meetings, right? Use the right language to let everybody know that girls are included. Uh, she's saying even in packs that have had girls in their pack. Uh, old habits die hard, Fiona, That's right? Fine. Most likely <laughs> there's not any ill intention. It's just like you say, this is just kind of the way people have always done things. Um, sure. 
Shout out to Lawrence, who is formerly of PAC 133 in Mendham, New Jersey. Now he's the Patriots Past Council's membership chair. Lawrence, thank you for watching. Yeah, Fiona points out that they use words like they will say boys in meetings when there's boys and girls mm. there. Understand, and you know what? There used to be a magazine called Boys Life, Fiona, right? There's a reason why we changed that. Um, it's a process. That's probably the best I can say, Fiona. We appreciate your patience. <laughs> we feel your pain. Uh, appreciate your patience. Keep at it. Keep at it. Uh, and, you know, um, let us know what else we can do to help. Arnold says at PAC 304, they are a family pack. They have lots of girl members. They recruit at Meet the Teacher Nights and local city events. That's excellent, uh, yeah. especially yeah. local city events. Meet the Teacher Night. That's a good sign. That means your school must like you. That's good, Arnold. Local city events, that's even better because uh, then you're really reaching out to your community, building that awareness. Excellent stuff. Um, John uh, is, says he's watching. For, he's a Cub Master of PAC 320 in New Berlin, Illinois. Thank you, John, for watching. Rita's watching from Troop 42 in Colorado, another Scouts BSA troop. Thank you, Rita. Uh, they have their Scouts, Scouts BSA meeting, go to a PAC meeting and have them help out sort of keeping their PAC meetings, uh, recruiting meetings organized. Um, Fantastic. Uh, things like that. So, uh, uh, you know, just sort of building that relationship, building that awareness, educating folks on, heck, uh, what's the difference between a Cub Scout pack and a, and a Scouts BSA troop, right? These are things that, that folks out there might not be aware of. Arnold says they use the Brand Center all the time for creating flyers. Thank you for saying that, Arnold. We're about to get into more detail on that. Um, uh, Alexander, greetings from Pack 495 in Lebanon, Tennessee. Thank you guys for all your comments. Keep those comments coming. Okay, so if we filled you guys in on a lot of the background. Uh, we know that parents in general, Arnold, have a positive impression of Cub Scouts in general. Uh, we know why they want to join, they develop character, learn about nature and outdoor skills, build self-confidence. Uh, it's a values-based organization. They want to have fun. So how do we communicate to them, hey, this is the place for you. And one option to do that is uh, the Brand Center. Uh, Michael, uh, so we, we've got here, I'm going to call it up real quick one more time. Give me one second, everybody. I apologize for the patience. This is where you Aaron, start. This is, the show. <laughs> hosting this show. This is where, yes, thank Aaron you. Does it all. That's great. Thank you. This is where you start with the Brand Center. Uh, yes, but right tell here. us a little bit more, Michael. What, 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 what do folks expect when they go to this website? What kind of resources are there for them? Absolutely. It's a resource hub. So think of it as a collection of stuff that you can download. So if you're looking for flyer templates, they're there. If you're looking for videos, they're there. Social media, uh, calendars and artwork, they're there. And many, many of them are customizable. So them are ready to go. So if you're looking for, you know, if you need a, I need a flyer for tonight's, whatever it is I'm doing, you can download them. They're a PDF. You customize the bottom, however you want to do it. If you're looking for something to post on your social media feed that says, hey, Join Scouting Night is coming up Tuesday at Stone Gale Elementary School at 7 p.m. You can probably find a graphic on here that you could download and use it and, and upload it and be ready to go. But it's super easy. Um, there's no password to get in. Um, if you do log into the system, it gives you a little bit more functionality, some of the things that you can do. But listen, if you just wanted to drop in here, download a flyer, uh, web banners are included in here. Uh, stock imagery. So sometimes people want to create their own flyer, for example, and I'm looking for a good image of yeah, yeah, a scout girl shooting a, you know, shooting a bow and arrow. Well, that image is up there, and you can download it as well as the adventure on logos and things like that. But really yeah, yeah. easy to navigate. It's got a search bar, so if I'm searching for, you know, archery, it'll pull up a whole collection of archery tagged images. And then if you want to narrow that down to just images that feature Cub Scouts or Scouts VSA or whatever, then you can search by that as well. Right. Hey, this particular graphic you're showing is, yeah. is also videos. This is also a place to download video assets. Um, and interestingly, this one that's actually highlighted in the screen, Aaron, um, as COVID was first coming out and becoming an issue, we realized that there was going to be a lot more virtual recruitment. We just weren't going to be able to be in person. Councils called us and said, hey, I would love to have a really short video that we could use um, either in school television networks or maybe we use them on online events. So what we're looking at is actually some of those. Uh, it's pretty much this in the case of these, it's pretty much the same message, but sometimes it's delivered by a boy. Sometimes it's delivered by a girl. Sometimes it's a male leader. Sometimes it's a female. It's all pretty much the same script, but they're, they're very short. Um, and there's some of the most downloaded assets on the brand center. Video is just, just really awesome.
Yeah, there are lots of lots of good things about the brand center. Um, I, I would suggest that, you know, uh, some folks maybe make their own flyers and that's totally sure. fine. Uh, some of the advantages to using uh, the brand center, uh, professional quality, photo quality, I think, and maybe one of your pack photographers is just as good. And that's totally cool if that's the case. But if not, hey, we've got some really, really powerful photography diversity boys, girls, all types of ethnicities are available. Um, so we've got options like that for you. Videos, um, uh, banners, web banners to put on your on your banners. website or whatever, uh, uh, options for social media. One thing I would say as, as, as a fellow recovering Cub Master, you know, there might be some advantages. If you have, if you have a, a smaller pack maybe, and you, you've got permission from all of your families to use pictures of their children and flyers, you know, some parents might be sensitive. They may not want a picture of their kid passed out at the school, right? Even though it's in Cub Scouts, you never know. You can never be too careful. Hey, BSA Brand Center has got, you don't have to worry about it. All that is taken care of. All of that is, is, is good to go. You can use it however you like. Uh, lots of good options there, again, for uh, join night flyer, um, social media recruiting campaign. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about how uh, you could use it on Facebook with your Facebook page. QR Absolutely. codes, all kinds of things like that. So there are lots of options. Um, everybody, I just want to make sure, okay, give me a second, guys. I'm going to put the URL up on the screen. There we go. It only took a few seconds. I'm going to leave hey, it up that, on the screen. And as that pops up, I would invite you just just go. It's okay just to go. You know, it's free. You just yep. go play around on the Brand Center and see what's there. Uh, there are assets for Scouts BSA. There are a few assets for venturing in Sea Scouting. Sea Scouting has their own site. But I mean, there, it's a deep well of assets and resources. And we kind of talk about it as a buffet. You may not need everything that's there, but right. there's a lot of cool stuff out there you might want to take a look at and use. Um, brand guides, there's all kinds of stuff. It's just mm -hmm. a neat place to go, go poke around. Yeah. It's, it's all kinds of scouting, marketing stuff. Anything that we roll out nationally, not just for Cub Scouting, but anything ends up on the brand center at some point. Right. So, yeah. And as you said, you know, if you're a Cub Scout pack who uh, traditionally you just really love archery, for example, there's photos of that you can put on there. Fishing. There's photos of that. Camping. Whatever your thing is, uh, it, it's on there. So you can find yeah. something for your pack on there. They do a great job with that. Uh, a few more questions we've got coming in. I think I mentioned Arnold says he uses the Brand Center all the time for flyers. Thank you, Arnold. Lawrence says he spoke with Mike. I think he's talking about you, Michael, uh, back in 2010 to talk about how uh, their pack continues to operate back then in the midst of a lockdown. Thank you, Lawrence. Appreciate that. Um, Jamie says that one of the big things and Jamie's from Tennessee, Michael, she yeah. says that one of the big things they hear the most is when with kids doing football and other things, it's not about time. It's about price. Understood that as well, Jamie. I think that, um, the, well, Michael, I'll let you think about it. You people who say it's, it's more, it's expensive. I can't afford it. Michael, what, what's, what's the response to that? Well, I think talk to your unit. Um, if, if, if price, listen, I don't think we want to ever, make sure we want to make sure that price is not a barrier for any youth that wants to be involved right so have a conversation with your with your unit um but also back out and take a look at it for a little bit i mean for for years i mean it was you know 15 dollars to join cub scouting which was just you know the best bargain in the world um yeah. i think the value that you get out of the cub scout me personally for my for my family and for for my unit and the value you get for for cub scouting just is just you just you just can't beat it so um I, I would really talk about the value of the program, the connectivity, the character and leadership that develops uh, around the program is just is just unequaled. So, uh, yeah, yeah I, I, think, I think I think the conversation about what the value of this program is in the lives of young people it's really unique. There's yeah. really nothing else like it. So. Right. Yeah. Everybody's got to make a uh, decision when it comes to their family budget. Right. It's certainly not up to us to tell sure. them what it's worth it, but. Yeah, the, the, the value, the bang per buck are, uh, for scouting, pretty darn high compared to the cost of sports and other things like that you can do as a dad who's got a couple of kids in athletics right now. Yeah, sports <laughs> are expensive too. But hey, yeah, it, it is tough. It's challenging. We're competing for time. We're competing for their money. Uh, we're competing for this just their emotional uh, uh, effort, right? So yeah, it, it's not an easy thing. All we can do is, is offer what we have to offer. Character building, leadership, fun, all that good stuff like that. That's Absolutely. about all you can right. do. Yeah. Uh, John asks a really important question. Will this video be posted later? This video absolutely will be posted later, John. Thank you for asking that. Uh, the reasons people join, the slide we looked at earlier, 
and the how people hear about Cub Scouting are important. John, we agree. That's why we showed it. And yes, this video, along with all of our videos, is available. Whatever Facebook page you're looking at it right now, uh, you can go back through the past videos and see them. You can also go to this URL right here for uh, all of our archive website uh, shows. We've talked about topics kind of like this off and on over the years. So, John, if you're interested, uh, go back and scroll through it, see what you like, tag a friend, do all that. Uh, John notes that he finds that word of mouth, networking with families in particular at school events is a great avenue. Just, boy, old-fashioned grassroots, right, Michael? Yeah. You can't beat it. John says he's met many parents who are actually looking for ways to connect their kids to Cub Scouts. And, you know, they just happen from talking to folks. Oh, I'm a Cub Scout later. Uh, so, yeah, word of mouth. Can't beat it. Right, Michael? Oh, you can't beat it. Yeah, it's in fact, I would. And we've all we've all heard this our entire lives. What's the best form of advertising? It really is word of mouth, because when Aaron comes to me and says, hey, I'm, we're going camping this weekend. We have the best time in Cub Scouts and I don't know anything about it. I'm like, boy, well, if Aaron thinks it's awesome, then I'm in. Right. Or at least I want to give it a try. Someone said this earlier, too. And I think, you know, as we talk about the brand center, and all the different assets and I think sometimes we may be programmed just to think about the flyers. But the reality is, and so I forget who mentioned it earlier in the chat, um, an omni-channel approach, which means mm -hmm. it's not just a flyer, right? It's how do we reach people on social with flyers, with posters, with yard signs, word of mouth, uh, even doing the flag ceremony at the local PTA meeting um, with your Cub Scouts in uniform great way to talk about the value of the program um, and just let people know that it's around. Now, I, I do want to warn everybody, we do have a spammer in the comments. Gina is commenting. Uh, Gina, who is our good friend. Hi, Gina. How are you doing? We appreciate you watching. Yeah. Gina, if we miss her, when are you coming back? No, I'm just kidding. Of course, <laughs> Gina says, good host, I guess, but excellent <laughs> guest today. So she's very pleased with your presence, Michael. Not so pleased with mine. Gina, I agree. You're right. <laughs> Everything's gone downhill since Gina has been away. We Send miss Gina very much. Gina does say, yeah, Gina does say she loves the brand center. I agree with that. Um, Wild Bill comments and says that he's referenced the videos that we do on the BSA Facebook page before and that they do, we do, I think he's talking about us. We do a pretty good job of making that available. Thank you, Bill. Appreciate it. Um, I want to just make sure I didn't miss anything here. Mike, hello from Central North Carolina. Um, okay, so we talked about like word of mouth, grassroots networking. One of somebody that I know, can't remember who it was, may have been you, Michael, told me they had a t shirt, a Cub Scout Pack t shirt, and that was sort of, they were sort of a walking advertisement. And on that shirt, they had a QR code. Michael, what's a yes. QR code? How, what's how a QR work? code? What do we do there? Oh, I don't know God. these things. I don't know anything. Okay, I have a confession. I'm a marketing guy, right? And you, know, you all, we all remember QR codes came out years ago, and they yeah. were a pain in the neck because you had to download never an worked. app on your it never phone. Worked, yes, and you, you know it, it seemed so easy, but it was just horrible, right? And then smartphone manufacturers began adding QR readers into the photography feature, and then that little thing called COVID happened, right? And then pretty soon you didn't have rec menus at your restaurants, but you did have a QR code on the table. So now I had to figure out how to order my whatever it was on the, the menu, right? Mm -hmm. I won't say the only good thing to come out of COVID was the QR code, but I don't know, maybe. Listen, QR codes are great because everybody's got one of these for the most part. And it is so easy to just take a picture of whatever that QR code is, click on a button and it takes you straight to that to that web location or wherever it wants you to go. Now, everybody talks about QR codes and a lot of us are creating QR codes, but you may not know how to create one. It's actually super easy to create a QR code. So for example, if you don't know this, uh, Chrome has now incorporated a QR creator into the navigation of Chrome. So if you go up to the little the three buttons on the top right hand side of the menu and click on it, um, there's actually a place there that will let you create a QR code uh, with the URL that's on your screen, which is which is pretty cool. Um, yeah. There's also a couple of different places that you can go on. There's lots of free ones. QRgenerator.com. Mm -hmm. You can go upload a Q and basically just download it. It's like a graphic, like a picture that you would include in a yep. in a Word document or something like that. Basically, you copy, paste it in. Put it right but, there on your flyer or whatever it is, right? Absolutely, on your flyers. Um, and listen, I don't think it's just about recruitment. If I'm marketing my day camp, for example, or I don't know anything else I'm doing in, out in the world where I want yeah. people to come to, you know, uh, an event, a reminder about something. Hey, click here. You can find instructions, whatever. 
It's super easy, doesn't cost anything. Um, as well as, and I'm sure you all know about this, and if we haven't done a, a Cub Chat on it yet, maybe there's one in the future, certainly some webinars on them, where the QR code that's specifically designed for online registration for my Cub Scout pack is available I was online. just about to say that. Michael is oh, reading awesome. my mind. Uh, yeah, mm. if, if you're looking, where do I link my QR code to? You could link it to your pin on Be a Scout .org. We actually talked about this a little bit last week. So for, for specific details on Be a Scout .org, which is, uh, uh, help me out, Michael, it's it's a basically, a, you can search by zip code to find packs near Absolutely. you. Absolutely. It's, yep. it's a unit, really, it's a unit locator. Like if you went to, you know, yep. a, a doc, big box retailer, hey, find a- Trying to find the closest store, right? Store near me. Mm -hmm. um, it does that, right? So it, it gives you a list of, you can sort by packs, you can sort by troops and so on and so forth. So You just yeah. have to make well, sure that you, as the unit leader, keeps your bsbscott.org pin or site up to date. Uh, and you oh, do absolutely. that through my dot scouting, I think, or my scouting. Is that right, Michael? That's correct. That's yeah. correct. And so if you, um, yeah, it's really important because you think about it, unless somebody gets a flyer or if they see a yard sign, by the way, you can put a QR code about your joint scouting night on your yard sign. On the yard sign. Yep. Perfect. Because you know, let's get, let's be honest. You're driving past the school. You're sitting in the drive through line. Hey, there's a yard sign that says join Cub Scouting. There's a. And usually little... back through. QR Back when there. we used to talk on phones, it had a phone number on it, and you'd write the phone number down. Nobody talks on these anymore, but uh, just take a picture of the QR code. So, yeah, um, easy to do. Eric, thanks to Eric, our good friend Eric, who is helping us out today monitoring comments. Uh, I, he reminded me where I saw those shirts with the QR codes, and they are on the official Amazon.com uh, uh, Scout shop. Ask me about joining Cub Scouts, Scout Me In, it says, and it's got a little spot for a QR code down at the bottom. Thanks for that reminder, Eric. Appreciate it. I knew I heard about it from somebody. Um, yeah, Eric, Eric, Eric is generally- Eric designed the shirts too, Eric so they're- gen <laughs> That's why he knows so much about them. Eric is generally is trustworthy, generally. Um, yeah, so one thing you can link to with a QR code is your beascout.org pen. Another thing you could consider linking to, uh, linking to is your own unit's Facebook page um, Michael, I think we have found that Facebook pages are a pretty good way to oh. market your unit to your Facebook friends. Most folks are already on Facebook. If you're not, there's a good chance that one of the other adults in your pack is, and there's a really good chance that somebody in your pack is really active and has a lot of followers on Facebook. Maybe that's the person who you Absolutely. choose to sort of monitor your Facebook page. What are some of the advantages of, of having, you know, an official page page for your pack? I'm a huge fan of this, Aaron. I think it's great. And listen, and because there are, and so just to pause for a second, there are, there's your own personal Facebook page right. that you may have, and you can talk to your friends and family on those and, you know, take pictures of what you had for breakfast, all that kind of stuff that happens on Facebook, but there's also organizational pages. So there may be one for your council. There might be one for district. Um, many, many scout units have them as well. And it's a little bit different. It has a different suite of tools with it. It has calendars built into it. You can talk about when the up, coming Penguin Derby races, all that kind of stuff. Uh, but they're great marketing tools because look, the average mom, and we have research on this, and I'm probably just as guilty as anybody else, checks their Facebook page close to seven times a day. Mm -hmm. I, know I check mine seven times a day, right? Yep. Um, but guess what? They're gonna research before parents today join something, they're gonna go online and just see what, what does the website look like, for example. What does the Facebook page look like? It's a great way to highlight all the fun, cool activities you do in your in your Cub Scout pack. So I definitely would do that. Um, it's a great way to promote. If you're having a joint scouting night meeting coming up, uh, listen, put that on your Facebook page. I would also highly recommend uh, boosting that post. And a boost means that you put a little money behind it and tell people in a broader audience about your joint scouting night. So yeah, I'm a huge fan of this. I think. Social and digital is where a lot of our youth and families are today, as we've talked about. Everybody's got one of these. Um, so you want to make sure that your your pack has a presence on it. And yeah, and if it's not you, find somebody in your unit because there's somebody in there that's super digital, super social. I'll let them help you out. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, regardless of, of whatever your feelings on uh, uh, Facebook are, somebody in your pack is on there and active like Michael, maybe, for example, uh, and that's a good person to to run that Facebook page. We've got just a couple more minutes with Michael here. I'm going to go through 
Uh, there's a last batch of comments here. If you guys have any questions, kind of this is kind of a last call. Get your last questions in. We've got a lot of good comments here. I just want to make sure. Um, Christina says the Brand Center is a fantastic resource. Thank you, Christina. Appreciate that. Christina's coming to us from Pack 112 in Babylon, New York. Thank you. All right. Um, Shelby says that is when you mention the fundraising. I think she's talking about, uh, you know, much later in the process um, when you're posting a, events and updates and things like that. Don't lead with the fundraising. Save that for maybe a little bit later, perhaps. Yeah. Stephanie says she's a DEN leader with PAC-19 in Texarkana. Um, she says, um, again, one of the problems is, is the price, not just necessarily of scouting, the price of everything. Yeah, it's expensive out there. It is. Uh, Stephanie, I agree. Um, again, I think the, the best response is uh, in terms of what you get, the value of scouting is still pretty darn good. But families are going to make their decisions, right? And there's, there's only so much you can do. All you can do is emphasize what we have to offer. So, um, Stephanie, we appreciate that. Uh, Wild Bill says that his active scouts are able to fundraise all of their costs to make their scouting year free through popcorn sales and camp cards. It's a great confidence builder and it lessens in independence. That's another thing about fundraising. Again, like we said parents don't like fundraising, but fundraising can be a learning experience. It can be a tool. It can be a way for kids to learn, right? To, to interact with adults, look people in the eye, be respectful, oh. all those lessons like that. And frankly, you learn what to do when someone says, no, thanks, I'm uninterested. You know, you learn to say, thank you, appreciate your time, right? I think that's absolutely right, Aaron. I mean, I think about, Again, you know, not everybody's going to say yes, and that's okay, right? Yeah. Right. But just we all wanted our, we all, we've all want this for our kids, right? The ability to be able to walk up, stick, shake hands, say hi, I'm Michael, and here's what I do, and that that kind of self confidence, um, that just a little activity like selling popcorn can help develop kids, right? I mean, totally. It's, yeah, I, I think I see now, it. and I think I'm understanding Shelby's comment. Shelby's comment, that is when you mention fundraising. She's talking about when people talk about expenses, right? That's when you mention, mm. well, we have fundraising opportunities. And with a, right. with a little bit of effort, not only do they learn about uh, interacting with, 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 with the general public and, and people, they, they also raise some money and, and offset a lot of the cost of scouting. Good job by Wild Bill. Uh, I like the name, Wild Bill. Good job. But he says his scouts fundraise and, and they're basically, their scouting year is free thanks to all the fundraising they do. That's awesome. That's really cool if you can create that culture in your unit to where, hey, you know, we're, we're paying for everything. We're going to fundraise and we're going to pay for everything. You don't have to pay anything. I mean, that's that's cool if you can do that. And the lessons, too, about, hey, we're going we're going to work our way to get to do this right by, you know, by selling popcorn or camp cards or whatever it is you do. You've got a goal in mind, right, that you're working right. towards. And right. yeah, a little, little little sweat equity pays and, off and it's, and it's a little it's like you're running a little business almost right you're, you're yeah. it's, a, it's, a, it's like a, exactly a entrepreneur um a few more shout outs carlton's and he is a 1985 eagle scout visual honor order of the arrow scout master for 11 years in southwest right. georgia carlton thank you sir appreciate it uh stephanie says especially uh i think she's talking about uh expenses if you have more than one kid Obviously, that would uh, increase the price. Again, Stephanie, that's a good chance to sell uh, fundraising opportunities. Um, uh, Jeremy notes that, uh, uh, I'm, Jeremy, I'm not sure that I'm clear on your comment. Seven to 10 contacts. Oh, I think he's talking about um, uh, when you talk to different people, he's saying for every seven to 10 different people you talk to, you make like a really good marketing contact. I think I'm, if that's what Jeremy that's is right. saying, that's his experience. Uh, when it comes to grassroots marketing and just talking to people at the Cub Scout program. Um, right, again, right. those um, Cub Scout, wow, we got tons and tons of comments, guys. I'm going to miss some of them. Jeremy says the QR code for registration is a godsend. John says 72% of their new applications were processed online last year using QR codes. Um, oh, and text to join. They said they offer a thing called text to join. That's really cool. Right. Uh, those are always important pathways to unit applications. Units need to have up-to-date information and turn on their online applications for Absolutely. Be a Scout. That's true. You have to make that on your end. You have to go in and turn that on in order for your unit to accept online applications, right? And that's amazing, too. I mean, that you can, I mean, you know, those of us that have been around scouting a long time, remember when we have, and they're still out there, fill out a three-part carbon form and write a check. What's a check? I haven't seen my checkbook in yeah. years because yeah. everything we do was with this, right? Mm -hmm. So. Yeah, it's yep. just streamlines the process. Absolutely. Um, a good question by Rebecca. She's interested in, in maybe some sort of um, uh, 
custom business card that you can pass out to people. Rebecca's from the Sioux City Council, Pack 273 in Pierre, South Dakota. Well, certainly you could get images for a business card from the BSA Brand Center. Now, as far as printing goes, probably that would be your own responsibility, I think, Michael, right? Absolutely. Well, and you might search, and I'm going to say this, and I'm not as good as Aaron. I'm not going to try to multitask and talk at the same time, but um, for a while we had peer to peer, what we call them peer to peer recruitment cards on the brand center, which was a business card template that you could add your information to. And by the way, if, if you don't find one up there, you know, a lot of the, uh, you know, you can buy the stock that's like perforated that you can run through a right. printer and right. then you break it off on business cards. But right. you know, we, we call those peer to peer a... recruitment cards. And what a perfect place to put a QR code. It says, yes. Hey, join me for the fun and pack through 74 and it. Did, you know, and you can invite them to a joint scout. Right. And that's something a Cub scout could pack it, pass out. How cool totally. is it as a, as a, you know, as a seven-year-old to get to pass out a, car, a business card on the playground? Hey, come join and, us. And Rebecca, I that's would suggest cool. if you're not interested in printing your own, you could have digital business cards. Uh, you can have them available on your Facebook page that folks can download just like any other photo. You can put them on your own uh, website blog. You can text them to people, whatever you want to do, um, if you're not interested in printing them yourself. Lots of options there. Appreciate that. Rob says your council might provide generic like cards that you can write your unit info on to. That's true. C contact your local council, your district executive. See what another they have. Idea. Another yeah. idea on that same vein is business cards. We had a, a volunteer on a webinar you know, several, several months ago who who took it upon herself to actually create um, bookmarks with QR codes on them that the local library was happy to pass out. So they're okay. promoting. But also, hey, click there here you go. and find that Cub Scouting. So and, kinds of fun stuff you can and do. And boy, you know, those are going to get in the hands of folks who aren't as familiar with Scouts, right? That's We talked about sort of going out of our own ecosystem. Uh, that's a good way to reach out uh, to other folks and just in the community. Uh, Jennifer it. notes that her son put a QR code on his Eagle Scout project. It's an orienteering course with a map and instructions. And he put a little QR, I'm guessing it's probably on a sign or something like that. I awesome, Jennifer. Really that's yeah, that's great. That's awesome, yeah. Um, Shelby says, keep in mind that they are publicly uh, viewable. Uh, yeah, so when posting events and pictures and things like that, like we talked about this a little bit earlier, Shelby, uh, you wanna make sure you have permission from all of your family members when you're posting pictures of their kids understandably, you know, they might be okay with you, the Cub Master, taking a photo of their kid, but when they see it online and it's available to the public, it could be different. Absolutely. Just make sure, just make sure you're transparent about it, right? Absolutely. Had that conversation. Listen, I, in my, in my own pack back in the day, you know, we had a family that they had the reasons they didn't want a photo posted um, yep. because of some issues. And that's absolutely fine. We knew that totally. we respected it. And, and you should have that conversation in your unit too. Hey, we're going to take a group photo. We're going to post it to our pack Facebook page. Is everybody cool with that? Right. And you're probably good to go, but have the conversation. Yes. Good point. Exactly. Yes. Uh, Shelby asks, um, regarding the brand center, have there been issues printing through services who might be concerned about copyright? For example, do you know, mm. have you ever heard of that, Michael? Has anybody ever taken an image from the brand center? tried to print it out at their local print shop and, and been not allowed to do so for copyright issues Has that ever been, do you know what? Yes. What that is, is a lot of those companies that, that, and there's a lot of online ones out there that, that will want to make sure that um, whoever's bringing that in owns the, right. the copy. So for instance, we didn't, we wouldn't want somebody um, using our logo to print something and sell something and make money with it. Right. Yes. Yeah, sure. Um, if you have issues with that, um, feel free to email me, email me directly and we can help you address that issue. Okay. But yeah, so, so it's michael.ramsey.scouting.org. So, Any issues, let us know. So, so, so Shelby, yeah. So just to be clear, Shelby, that you that could possibly be an issue. Uh, good Michael is, is volunteering to uh, help you out with that. Put a dot between his two names, michael.ramsey at scouting.org. He will help you out with that. Excellent Absolutely. question, Shelby. Uh, Jennifer says she just referred someone today to the BSA Brand Center to work on their wood badge ticket goal. This video was perfect timing. Jennifer, we're, we're happy to help. I hope, I, hope, I hope that we provided the service. And thanks to that person. Good luck working on their wood badge. I hope that goes well. I want to quick remind everybody before we let Michael go, once again, all of our past episodes are available here. You can also find it simply on whatever Facebook page you're watching right now. When this is over, give it a few minutes. Facebook likes to process the video and then it will show up in the list of all the other videos. And I think there's even a category you can click on that are just live videos. Uh, Eric, thanks for your help today, my friend. He, Eric points hey. out that um, 
uh, they've posted a link in the comments to those peer-to-peer -peer cards, Michael, that you mentioned. So guys, Excellent. if you're interested in those peer-to-peer -peer cards, Eric has done a good deed and posted in the comments a link to them. Um, Eric, one last question. This is from a different Eric. One last question, Michael, then we'll let you go. Um, does that include, uh, okay, I guess, I think he's asking about like an eagle or a fleur de lis, fleur de lis on a cake. Um, are there any copyright uh, issues or anything with things like that? Have you ever heard anything about that, Michael? Absolutely. I know a lot about that. Uh, so, <laughs> so we have, so back in the misty past, you know, we would have people that would use our marks and logos and they would go print a bunch of t-shirts somewhere and they're right. really making money on the scouting brand. It doesn't really benefit scouting. Right. Right. So uh, there are, so like a lot of organizations, uh, we have rules and uh, regulations around our, around the marks that the, that the BSA owns, the Florida Lee, the Cub Scout logo, all you know, wood badge, Eagle Scout, all that kind of stuff. So yes. So if you have questions about that uh, and, and a cake is a good example because um, there is actually, we actually license that logo to various bakeries across the country and let them put that logo on Eagle Scout cakes and all that kind of stuff too. But if you, an easy way to find information on that is to go search for BSA licensing online and you'll pull up a website that has all the information about our licensing, um, as yep. well as their special pull down that says, if you're having a, if you're having a Eagle Scout cake produced, um, here's the process to go through for that. So yes, great I, think, I think that Eric, the, our friend Eric, I think also posted a link to that licensing link Excellent. in the chat That's also. Great. Man, we're gonna have to have Eric help us out. He's, he's, he's done a good job today helping folks well, out. Eric's I appreciate it, that. Right? Eric, that um, would be fantastic. Michael, before we let you go, any final comments on the Brand Center? Anything else people need to know about marketing their unit? Absolutely. Listen, and thanks again for having me on. This has been a fun conversation. Yep. Uh, you and I could talk about Cub Scouts forever, right? We do it all the time anyway. Right? My favorite topic, right? This and Jamboree. Let's go talk about scouting. Mm. The, uh, so go check out the Brand Center. Go check it out. Um, it's really, it's a neat site. It's organized by, by recruitment, also by program. So if you just wanted to go surf around and see what, Scouts BSA or Cub Scouting videos and photos are, are out there. It's just kind of a fun to go shop through it. I would say this, um, if you are gonna market your joint scouting night uh, to your community, um, don't just do flyers. I think about all the different places that people in your community that you could reach them with the message. I think it's social. I think sometimes you might be able to email them. Um, certainly yard signs and flyers and bookmarks and all those different things. Um, whoever said it was right. Um, there's some marketing research that honestly I've not been able to validate, but it makes so much sense. It's got to be true. You know, it takes at least seven touches for someone. Uh, so ex seeing a message at least seven times, I think it's more than that, before they remember something, right? Okay. So, mm -hmm. um, so don't just do flyers. Uh, find ways to have your pack raise the flag in front of the school so people see that you're there. Uh, popcorn sales, do things in uniform, anything you can do to to let people know that, that scouting is alive and well in your community. Um, last and probably the best piece of advice, make sure the administrative assistants and the staff at the office at your school knows about Cub Scouting. Mm -hmm. Give them a card or give them a flyer um, yep. because sometimes people will walk in and say, hey, is there a Cub Scout pack here? Mm -hmm. And they'll be happy to say, yep, here's the here's, mm -hmm. here's Aaron, here's Pat. It's awesome. we, we could do a whole show on this. And I think it is, as a matter of fact, we have. How do you get to know your school? How do you get to know that? Oh, yeah. system? Well, you know, pick up trash around the school, do some, help them out. A, a, a scout is kind, right? We're supposed to be doing that kind of stuff anyway. You know, do some yeah. projects around that school. You'll be amazed how they remember who you are. Absolutely. And the energy of our volunteers out there spreading the word about Cub Scouting. I, I love it when we do webinars on this topic because you've got, you've got parents passing out flyers. And like, so for instance, they may not be able to do a scout talk inside of a school. But man, they're out in the parking lot passing out flyers in the drive through line, or they put up a bunch of tents on the on, out in the front lawn and mm -hmm. got QR codes around them and uh, flag ceremonies at the PTA meetings uh, as a way to provide some service back to the PTAs. All those things are creative and they're great ways to let people know that Cub Scouting is in your school. Go join. Yeah, them. absolutely. Great conversation, Michael. Really appreciate the time today. You guys can see the URL right there on the bottom of the screen. Go check it out. Tag your friends. Once again, this video will be on this Facebook page, wherever you're watching it, for you for eternity. Thank you all for watching. <laughs> Thanks again, Michael. Appreciate it. Hope everybody has a good weekend. You Michael, care. enjoy your weekend. Stay cool. It's hot out there. You uh, too. Have Take a good it easy. Weekend. Thanks a lot. Appreciate it. So long, everybody. We'll see you guys later. Bye, guys. See you later.